All right, ladies, if you are a curious, intelligent, and sophisticated woman, be ready, because today's video will make you rethink your whole ideas about love. There's no denying that love can be a mysterious thing, right? That a lot of us don't understand. I mean, when it goes wrong, it hurts like hell. But when it's going well, it's the best feeling in the whole world. Learning the facts about love, the science behind it, and how it affects your brain can help you navigate your romantic journey with clarity and awareness. And I hope that you're the type of woman that can focus and watch this whole eight minute clip instead of just skipping from video to video and learning nothing at the end. In case you're new to the channel, my name is Ismail and today I will discuss seven psychological facts about love that will change your perspective on love completely. I hope that you're ready for this eye-opening journey so let's begin. As many of you know, men are usually driven by physical attraction first. And according to a study, scientists have proven that it takes about 8.2 seconds for a man to experience deep attraction for a woman. Also, men are usually a lot faster when it comes to you know, <laughs> finishing business in the bedroom. So I guess we're always rushing through things. However, this is not the same story for you ladies. You know, you have brain features that make you far more efficient and appreciating the complete range and deepness of the emotional spectrum as compared to us men. You may find a guy cute or hot, but to feel deeply attracted to him, it takes about 15 days according to this study. And before we go to number two, for all of you that have been asking in the comments about my coaching services and guidebooks, you can find more information on my website, savethemessenger.com. My private community is currently full, but you can find all the tools there that may help you in your love journey. Okay, next one. If you can barely tolerate life when you're not in a relationship, if you have an intense fear of never finding love and staying single, you may suffer from something called anoptophobia. And here are a few signs that you can ponder on. If every time that you go through a breakup, you tend to focus your attention on looking for a replacement, let's say, rather than allowing yourself to heal and truly bounce back from your last relationship. You also keep all of your exes around in case that you don't find anybody else and you end up single, at least you have some prospects that you can call and try to be in a relationship with. Also, you tend to lose yourself in your relationships. Whenever you become seriously involved with someone, you automatically change to mimic their behavior and suddenly you find yourself eating foods that you don't like, watching TV shows that you don't enjoy, or dressing in a certain way just to please your partner. Intelligence is a highly valued trait in our society, but for those of you with a high IQ, finding love can be often a challenge. While we can all agree that being smart has many benefits, it can also make dating and relationships difficult. And here are some of the reasons why. It's harder for you to find partners that stimulate you intellectually. So many times you find conversations and interactions boring. There was even a study showing that you could predict the intelligence level of a woman by measuring the intelligence level of her husband. Meaning that most of you ladies usually choose men that are as smart or smarter than you. Like you never pick somebody that you would consider dumber. Another reason that women with high IQ can struggle in love is that you can have unrealistic high standards, which can make it difficult to find someone who meets your expectations. And last one I've seen is that it's harder for you to compromise because you're so clever that you think you're always right. And this one I struggled a lot in my 20s. Like every time that I had an argument with my partner at the time, I just got fixated on winning the argument, you know, rather than finding the best solution for both of us. How long should I wait to sleep with a man well ask yourself this if a guy wants to have sex right away is it because he's trying to create a deeper connection with you or is it because he's trying to satisfy his needs now you might choose to be intimate first and then build the connection later but know that you run the risk of him putting less effort because he got what he wanted without investing a lot of time and energy the mere exposure effect refers to a psychological phenomenon in which people prefer things that they're familiar with. So it basically says that the more you're around something, the more you tend to like it. This explains why many of you ladies fall in love usually with a fellow student or a co-worker because you spend a lot of time with them. But here's the thing ladies, keep in mind that this effect can mess with your love life many times, which I've seen. Instead of looking for someone who makes you happy, you might end up settling for someone that you just see them every day at work or, or in class 
and even though they're not good for you just the fact that they're around you always keep going back to the same kind of circle of men that you know and you're not out there exposing yourself to new connections and new circle of friends it's normal to lose your appetite or feel uneasy when you just start seeing someone new that you're deeply attracted to like maybe you're even having a hard time falling asleep thinking about them and studies have found that when we really like someone, okay, our brain activity is similar to that of someone who's high on cocaine. So yes, love can feel like a drug indeed. And that love sickness that you may actually be feeling, it's the stress hormone cortisol contracting the blood vessels in your stomach, making you feel sick sometimes and losing your appetite. And this usually fades over time, you know, as you become more comfortable with this person and you get to date them and know them better, especially if they're good for you and they make you feel at peace and wholesome. Have you ever had a crush on a man that didn't like you back? Or you were dumped by a guy that you loved and this only made you pursue him even harder? This is actually something known as frustration attraction. And I know that many of you ladies can relate to it. And maybe you experienced this where you know those moments when you're going through a heartbreak and you're doing everything that you can to get that person back because your self-esteem is pretty much non-existent and you want to cling on to them. But then a few years later, okay, when you completely moved on, you see them again, okay, you see this person somewhere and you feel nothing for them. And you look at them and you don't even know how you were attracted to them in the first place. I know that I've been there myself and what I teach a lot of my clients is that to train your brain so the moment that a man walks away, okay, that he shows a lack of interest or makes signals, you see that as the most unattractive behavior that he can do. And you feel completely turned off by that. I know that it's easier said than done to master this type of detachment, so I'll make more videos in the future to help you ladies. Now let's talk about something that I know many of you will love, and that is the power of suggestion in relationships. Simply put, it's the idea that you can influence your partner's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors through subtle cues. When you use suggestion, you're planting a seed in the other person's mind that can grow and blossom into something beautiful. For example, instead of saying, you're completely wrong about that. Saying something like, I know we can work this out, conveys confidence and faith in the relationship, which can in turn inspire the other person to feel the same way. Focus on praising your partner, okay? Every time that they do something right and positive, rather than criticizing them when they make a mistake. And obviously the power of suggestion is not a magic bullet, but I think that many times we focus on the negative aspects of the relationship and the things that we want to change on the other person, and that can lead us into a vicious cycle that can just completely destroy our relationship. All right, ladies, I hope that you enjoyed learning about the seven psychological facts about love. And if you're still here at the end of this video, watching this clip, I can tell you that you're not like 90% of people out there. Like they just want a quick reward and put no effort into their self-development journey. So I promise you that if you keep learning about these topics, okay, your love life will change tremendously. Every single month you'll see improvement because like I always say, for your relationships to change, you need to change. Have a beautiful day.